Hi, this is Rosie, Friendly Neighborhood Society Rapier Marshal, at least in 2020 when this is being filmed. Today I'm going to talk to you about two very useful tools in your marshaling kit. First and foremost is this tape measure. The requirement for this tape measure is that it's at least nine feet long, and we'll talk about this at length in just a minute. And the other is a spear gauge. Someone asked me about this, and I did create a 3D CAD model that can be printed. I've printed a bunch of these on an SLA printer, but verified that it can be printed on an FDM printer, um, and it works just as well. So this is what it looks like. It looks kind of like the letter H, and on the wide side, it says must fit here. And then on the narrow side, it says can't fit here. And that's it. And there's a handy dandy loop, so you can tie it to your armor bag. I'll show you real quick how this works. So here's a spear, and this one, will actually pass um, our standards. On the can't fit here side, see, I can't get the H onto the spear. But on the must fit here side, it fits right on. So we know that this spear shaft is within the appropriate range. Um, conversely, these are just dowels because I happen to not have rattan that don't fit our standards. But this dowel, if this was a spear that someone brought me with a piece of rattan that was this size, well, I could test it with the must fit here and it certainly fits there. But then when I test it on the other side, the can't fit here side, uh-oh, it fits in there as well. So this one fails because it's too small. Similarly, this other piece, well, it doesn't fit in the can't fit here. That's fine, so it's not too small but it also doesn't fit in the must fit here, so it's too big. So a piece of rattan this size would also not pass because it's just too big. One thing to keep in mind when you do download this, uh, the CAD file for this, and I'll put this up on Thingiverse and I'll put the note about uh, how to find it in the comment section for this video. Um, when you do download it and print it, as soon as you print it, do verify that the sizes are correct. So they should be one and one eighth inch and one and three eighths inches, just in case your printer accidentally scales something up or down. So that is the spear gauge for the size of the spear shafts. Now the other tool, super multi-purpose, is this tape measure. And as I mentioned, it needs to be at least nine feet long. And with this, you'll be able to measure a whole bunch of our requirements for weapons. Let me show you. I drew on this tape, it's still usable as a tape, but now it becomes a super useful part of my uh, fencing marshal kit. The first two things that I wrote on here is at the half inch mark, see I put an arrow going down to the half inch mark, and I wrote flex, dagger, and cut and thrust, CNT. And at the one inch mark, I have an arrow going to the one inch mark, I wrote flex for rapier. I'll show you how to use those in another video. But let's move on to the other measurements. The next measurement is at the four inch mark, and I do apologize, this is the one of course that I messed up. But see, starting from the four inch mark, I have an arrow going up, and I wrote spearhead. That means that spearheads have to be, sort of the must be at least this tall to ride, they have to be beyond that line. So in this case, the spearhead, this spearhead is longer than four inches, so it passes. So now let's move on. From there, the next measurement that we hit is at the 10 inch mark. I have an arrow going down from 10 inches and it says grip, um, grip length, sword and dagger is less than 10 inches, two-hander with an arrow going up, meaning that's greater than 10 inches. So here I have a dagger. The grip, for our intents and purposes, starts at the leading edge of the keons. And that doesn't make it to this line. So it's less than 10 inches. So this is an appropriate grip length for a sword or a dagger. Moving on, the next mark is at 18. With an arrow leading down from 18, that means that less than this is the length for a dagger blade. So let's look at this dagger. Once again, daggers are, the, the length of a blade is measured from the leading edge of a keon. So starting from the leading edge of that key on up, well, this is actually longer than 18 inches. So technically, this is not a dagger. Hey, full disclosure, I made this as a dagger almost 20 years ago as a gift for my husband. 
Back then, this would have been a dagger. Now, it's a sword, and that's okay. Moving on from 18 inches, next is 20 inches, with an arrow going down from there. So less than that is the maximum length of a spearhead. Back to this spearhead. Clearly, that doesn't get to the 20 inch mark. So this is perfectly fine for a spearhead. The next measurement is at 24 inches arrow leading down from there and it says two-handed sword grip so two-handed sword grip needs to be less than 24 inches next is 28 inches less than that is dagger length the overall length of a dagger needs to be less than 28 inches next measurement 30 inches with an arrow going up from there a two-hander blade is what that says so a two-hander blade needs to be at least 30 inches long. Further from there, at the four foot or 48 inch mark, with an arrow going down, it says two-hander blade. So a two-hander blade needs to be less than 48 inches long. Getting close to the end now, 58 inches, less than that single sword. So the entire sword needs to be less than 58 inches long. And at 60 inches, two-hander. The entire two-hander needs to be less than 60 inches long, or five feet. Then there's nothing more until we finally hit the nine-foot mark, 108 inches, spear. Spears need to be less than that. Now I did mention all of this in inches, and I do apologize for my friends in um, Drakenwald and Lokok and any other place that doesn't use inches, I'm sure you can translate that to centimeters and meters.